ended up picking up this box, there was one miniature that caught my eye for actually the wrong reason entirely, but I want to use that exact same miniature and turn it into something absolutely heretical, weird, and at the same time, absolutely awesome. And to start things off, I'm going to grab my pair of hedge trimmers and take off this flag, which was actually the main thing that caught my eye originally when I saw this model. I definitely want to find some other uses for this flag and see if I can use it in another project. But for now, I took out some other bits and considered what I could possibly make this into. I measured up all the different weapons and compared them to the slot, seeing what will actually work visually aesthetically. When I originally started this project, I didn't have a specific idea in mind, and it only came together much later when all the pieces sort of came through. I originally want to actually use this hammer, but the moment I put on this Psyker staff, I instantly had an idea for what this project could be. Reading the books, Belisarius Call has been doing some extremely heretical stuff. He's been experimenting with different gene seeds that, frankly, he should not have access to uh, when he was designing the Primaris. And some of the things he made have been hinted at as being very out of the loop. But before getting more into that, I decided to take off this head, which I originally actually took off and I was considering making this project something else. So instead, I'm going to replace this head with something that I think could match this much more. I tried out a different heads, uh, first was a normal Primaris one, then this one from the Green Knights that I thought worked pretty well. But I ended up settling for this head instead and placing it much lower in the socket. And the way it indented itself into the armor gave this very cool aesthetic of the armor just being really chunky and powerful. So I ended up taking off all the parts and I started scraping off all the different areas that I thought gave off too much of a vibe of it still being a Sigmar miniature. Also scraping off a lot of the extra ornaments as I thought it was a little bit too much. Primaris and Space Marines in general generally don't have too many ornaments on their armor, even the extra high ranking ones, so I wanted to match that aesthetic a little bit more. I also used a bit of Tamaya Thin Cement just to smooth out the area where it was scraping off. Also removing a lot of these visual leather belts that were essentially not matching the 40k aesthetic too much. Scraping off the Age of Sigma shoulder pad to make it more plain. I also considered using this Black Templar one, but I realized it was a bit too much. Now I'm going to take out Sprugu, which is going to be uh, just a lifesaver for what I need to do. Which is going to be essentially attaching this backpack straight to the back armor without doing any additional modifications. It'll naturally fill in all the extra gaps between the armor and the backpack, making sure that it seals really well. When I took out the staff, I originally wanted to cut it off at this area, but when I compared the size to the actual model, I realized it was looking a little bit too tall. So I ended up detaching it from that area, but also trying my best to keep that little cable. I used a bit of sprue goo so that it naturally attaches to the staff and looks much more coherent with the rest of it. And as I was considering making a second model, I finally realized what this project could be. In the books, there's this character called Alpha Primus, which is hinted at as being this very powerful psyker in one of the original Primaris. It's quite heavily hinted that he's essentially part Thousand Sons, but a loyalist. And that's the idea I really want to lean into. But for now, it's time to start the painting process, for which I grabbed some Pearl Quill Dark Umber and applied a very thin glaze as my original base coat. You might have seen me paint the skeleton using only two paints, and uh, when I was actually laying my second coat, I ended up mixing umber with this blue-gray color, and it generated this very interesting color that I really enjoyed. I ended up going a little bit too far into the blue spectrum, but for this miniature, I want to lead into that exact same color, but this time, really go into the whole desaturated spectrum of it. So I started off by doing specifically that, mixing dark umber from Pro Acryl and AK Interactive dark blue-gray. They're contrasting colors, so by mixing them together, I created a very desaturated color, but at the same time, it started to have this very interesting look to it. As my base tone was a very warm color, applying it much colder and desaturating at the same time gave it a very lifeless look to it. Which gave a really cool aesthetic that I think will fit the project essentially really well, as I don't want this guy to be part of a very large chapter or something similar to that. With the armor looking as heroic as it is, it kind of creates this very interesting dynamic between the armor showcasing him as being this very bright hero, however the colors will be so desaturated and lifeless, showcasing the idea that he's not proud of his chapter and it's something that is a well-hidden secret. For the painting style, I went for something different than what I usually do. I decided to create these brush strokes in a very chaotic manner making sure I never have to smooth blends and consistently have the previous layer always visible. Making sure that every single color I put on the miniature is somehow visible through the different lines and cracks. It's something I've seen a lot done in traditional art paintings, mainly when they're done with oils. 
that create this very interesting look where every single color is visible, but at the same time, visually starts blending together when you're looking at it. And for the colors, all I did was essentially blend in between the two previous colors, slowly transitioning up to the blue gray, and then adding a lot of white to create much brighter colors. I also then added a lot of these very specifically placed highlights that I thought would accentuate the parts of the armor, essentially creating an effect of edge highlights without specifically doing an edge highlight. That way, when you're looking at the model from far away, you're still able to distinguish all the different bits of armor. For this loincloth, I decided to take the similar color I was using before, but add a lot of green to it, but still having the very lifeless color to it. And adding highlights just to the bottom portion of the scale that I thought gave a really cool effect visually. For the, I think this is called the loincloth, I'm actually not sure what this would be called, but I decided to start off with the previous umber color and then start off by using this burnt gray color. Again, doing very similar thing that I did in the armor, but going for much larger strokes. Trying my best to create as a chaotic pattern as possible and making sure that it doesn't have a cohesancy and leaves a lot of the previous colors still visible. This was actually extremely difficult to do as I naturally wanted to follow the pattern of the cloth and create very specific highlights, but I did my best to turn off my brain to the best of my ability and create these just absolutely random lines and scratches. And I think the loincloth turned out really cool. For her skin tone, I decided to go for what is in lore described as usually Thousand Suns, which is this very burned copper color. Once again, as with every previous color, I started off by using Dark Umber and started to add a bit of Bugman Glow into it. I didn't go all the way to Bugman's Glow and started off essentially adding a bit of white to it. This also worked really well, as the rest of the miniature is very desaturated. I felt like if I went too saturated with a face, it would just randomly stand out and just have a very glaring, unpleasant effect. Making a similar texture to the rest of the armor, but just a little bit smoother. This eye is actually the only area where I used pure, as saturated of a red as possible to create a glowing effect. And the miniature already looks really awesome, however, I felt like one color was sort of missing. Now, I didn't want to use any metallic paints, as I felt like it just would not match the style and the aesthetic of the model, so I decided to grab these two colors and try my best, and I mean really my best, to start having a non-metallic gold effect. It's not something I usually do, so I'll try to use it on the staff and a little bit on the sword to, I don't know, just do my best and hopefully have something that looks kind of decent. I started off by once again using a bit of dark umber mixed in with some of that AK orange brown, slowly building up to the ochre color. I tried doing a bit of wet blending, however, I realized it really wasn't working as, as I started trying, the colors just blend in a bit too well. Now, I've only attempted gold non-metallic metal once previously, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say it's probably one of the hardest non-metallic metals to get, so mine is not going to look fantastic, but it'll still look better than I think a metallic paint would look in this model. And as with all things, you gotta try in order to learn. I did my best to focus on the areas where I thought light would be catching the most. Using true metallic metal gold models I had on my desk as a reference for how light was reflecting off them. Once I was done with the staff, I made sure I also applied some of the paint that I previously forgot to some of the handles. Using a mixture between the scales and the armor for it. For the sword, I started off by trying to think that I'm gonna paint normal non-metallic metal steel. However, I quickly realized that that would look a bit too boring and blend in with the rest of the miniature too well. So I took out some Pearl Krill Turquoise and started mixing it with my previous umber color. Mixing it a tiny amount of white and turquoise to make sure that the color was still desaturated but also bright enough that visually you'd be able to distinguish it as turquoise. Again, doing the similar pattern that I did for the rest of the mono which I thought would create cohesancy and just visually look really cool. Ended up creating this really nice effect of the sword having all of this, this runic glow to it. I then varnished the model and used some of my favorite acrylic wash to essentially create more depth on some of the areas that I thought got washed out a bit too much. Which was primarily the shoulder pad area of the knee pad that also had the lion, and some areas of the staff. The main reason I varnished the model was because the acrylic wash would have a much easier time essentially settling under the recesses and not staining the model. I was worried the acrylic wash would actually ruin all the previous work I did, however the effects are now fantastic and I'm glad I did it. I then once again varnished the model, this time in pure matte, and started working on the base cutting off these push-to-fit pegs. For my base, I decided to use this 3D printed Imperial statue, which looks pretty cool. I had this base for quite some time, but I could never find a perfect use for it, mainly because it didn't really match the aesthetic of all my other units, and having it just on its own will not really fit an army aesthetic, so this actually works perfectly for this project. For a while, I did consider repainting it, but I quite quickly realized that it actually fits the aesthetic of my model perfectly. However, I did attach a lot of these different tufts that I thought would really lighten up the base, 
and create a lot more visual contrast with my miniature. Hopefully separating it visually from the base, but at the same time creating much more of a dynamic look for it. Also using a bit of Militarum contrast paint to create a bit more of green on the base. And with that, the miniature was done. I think this miniature is turning out fantastic. It's probably the best thing I've painted so far. It's not a massive knight, it's not a massive miniature, it's not a Primark or anything crazy, but there's just something about it that everything I wanted about it came together in the exact way I hoped it to be. So, I like it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, liking and leaving a comment helps out a massive amount. Thanks.